All right, Brad Weber, Coffeeville Sports Information Director, back here with Raven Sports Drive. Joining me today is our president on campus, Dr. Marlon Thornburg. Welcome. Hey, Brad. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. <laughs> no problem. Well, um, let's dive right into it. Uh, I know the big, the big news on campus over the last year or so has been obviously, uh, you know, COVID-19 and, and, and uh, responses to that. I just kind of want to throw it out there for you. You know, what's, how, how's that affected college? You know, um, none of us were expecting the COVID mm -hmm. situation to hit. I think uh, we, we've learned a lot as we've gone through the semester and, and the summer. Uh, last spring was, was challenging. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we made the decision back in uh, uh, late March to uh, close down the campus and go to a virtual environment for uh, all of our instruction. And you know, just like other schools did, uh, I think we learned along the way yeah. of what worked and what didn't work. <laughs> uh, I think we found that uh, some of our students excel in an online environment, and some and didn't. Some don't. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I think we've we've taken that information and we've tried to uh, make good decisions and mm -hmm. make adjustments to uh, some of our online uh, resources that we okay. had. I think that. Um, you know, we've we've all uh, learned to adapt. I think you're going to see kind of a change in in the face of education uh, for the future because of situations like um, the COVID, uh, the pandemic. You uh -huh. know, um, I think that we uh, we have students that figured out right away this this isn't working for me, and and I need to do something different. Uh, you know, our enrollment. Uh, took a hit over the summer and then also this past fall uh, simply because I think uh, parents and, and kids decided to stay home instead yeah. of coming to school. Um, you know, people are, everybody sees it a little bit differently mm -hmm. and that's something we found not only with, with our students but also with uh, the community and, uh, and our employees. You know, we had employees that uh, we're ultra sensitive to uh, the pandemic, and uh, then we have employees that that weren't, and we have yeah. students the same way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, navigating through the the process and figuring out, you know, what protocols do we need to put in place to keep everybody safe yeah. at, or as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really what we've focused on. We've tried to gather input from our uh, constituents on, you know. How, how do you see it? What, what's something that we can do to protect everybody? Um, we have protocols in place for uh, our, you know, the, even the use of our vehicles yeah. and um, our offices. And, and of course, this fall we made the decision to go to uh, a mask campus, mm -hmm. uh, being that uh, in high traffic areas and classrooms, uh, the you know, library, the student success center, bookstore, uh, business office, records office, financial aid, you know, mm -hmm. you, ha you have to wear a mask in those areas. And we've been, you know, going, going into it, we were concerned that, you know, will people follow these protocols? Will people mm -hmm. uh, do what we need them to do so that we can stay open? Yeah. And that was a concern uh, early on, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our, our kids and our mm -hmm. staff, you know, they, they really stepped up. and. We've had, you know, you might walk through a building and see one or two kids with a mask down, but for the most part, yeah. people have, they've stuck to those protocols. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we went from buying hand sanitizer in, uh, in small, <laughs> in small yeah. uh, uh, quantities uh, to buying pallet loads of, yeah. of uh, gallon jugs of hand sanitizer to put out. And, you know, we put those in every classroom in the high traffic areas. And, you know, the first uh, couple months, Man, we went through some hand sanitizer yeah. and, and, of course, disinfecting supplies. You know, we've spent uh, well over $300,000 just oh, in, yeah. in, in PPE gear uh, just to address these concerns. Yeah. And, uh, and again, our, our ultimate goal was uh, to be able to make it through the fall semester mm -hmm. and, you know, not have to, uh, like we did in the spring, not have to take a, a class that was face-to-face uh, -face and turn it into a uh, virtual classroom yeah. at the last minute. And I think our kids will 
be a lot more successful if we can if we can make it. Now, of course, we're in our last week. Uh, knock on wood, we've been doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, our COVID rates are are much lower than um, uh, some of the other schools mm -hmm. and uh, some of the other areas even. So we're, uh, you know, I think we've done a good job. And, um, you know, could we do more? Absolutely. There's always some place to improve. And uh, that's, we're constantly looking at that. How can we do a better job? Mm -hmm. and, and what are some areas that uh, we need to do uh, additional things? What, what additional resources do we need for some of our kids? And we're constantly looking at that, so. Okay. Well, and then like you mentioned, we're in our, our last week, you know, here right before Thanksgiving, and then we will break um, for about six weeks or so, you know, come back in January. So looking forward to the spring, um, you know, the, the, the you know, college schedule in the spring, you know, what, what can kids expect uh, going forward into the spring? Well, we made a decision uh, about a month ago that we're going to stick to our spring schedule as originally published. Okay. And so we plan to be back face-to-face uh, -face with all of our classes. Uh, besides our normal online yeah. offerings that we have and we plan to, to get back to normal okay. and hopefully uh, we'll be able to do that of course uh, you know we tested in August we tested all of our kids coming into our residence halls mm -hmm. and we'll do the same thing in coming January in, okay. as the kids come back uh, we will do them in in groups uh, we will have some kids that will be coming back about a week and a half earlier than others simply because of uh, the the what used to be the spring sports yeah. now you know that have, have moved to the spring uh, we do have some of those like basketball mm -hmm. uh, men's and women's basketball and uh, men's and women's indoor track uh, will and uh, uh, volleyball there, there are a few of those that uh -huh. once their seasons get started they'll be able to start practicing we'll test those kids as they come okay. in and then, of course, we'll do our standard procedures of, of uh, self-quarantining and or self-isolation if it's a situation where we have a positive case on campus. And then um, we'll, we'll continue okay. as we've been going. And we're going we're gonna to keep our spring break in place. Okay. Uh, with the, you know, the fall sports being moved to the spring, it's, it's uh, changed a lot of, some, a lot yeah. of the activities and, and scheduling and... Um, we're you know we're making those arrangements to uh, you know to to hopefully we'll have those um, uh, activities this spring. Yeah. But of course we're ready at a minute's notice to to change. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> as we found out, the the one thing about it is um, you might uh, you know on Tuesday you might decide hey we're going to do these things. This is what we're doing. And on Thursday <laughs> we're doing something completely yeah. different because uh, the pandemic situation yeah. is is ever changing. And I think that's uh, uh, being flexible and and uh, and I and I think our staff and and even our students I think they've been very uh, they've been they've been very good about. Uh, making adjustments yeah. as needed, and that's and we do, we just need everybody to be kind of go with the flow of whatever's happening. You <laughs> that's <gotta> right. <laughs> be mindful of others and and do what do what you got to do so mm -hmm. that we can um, we can make it through the semester. We and we can all be successful. So okay. Well, and like you mentioned, most of our sports have been moved to the spring, uh, which bring which would bring me around. I know in the fall we really didn't have to have you know home sporting events or protocols. You know what are we going to do for those types of things? But obviously, come spring, you know uh, we'll have you know f spring football for the first time. I think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know absolutely. we'll have basketball, soccer, you know volleyball. You know how are we going to? What are our, some of our protocols, and how are we going to uh, adjust uh, to hosting some of those home events? Well, that that does bring up a a, a tough situation there with uh, limiting attendance. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at that now, trying to figure out. We're looking at our seating charts, and we're trying mm -hmm. to figure out how we can space people out, and what's an acceptable number, mm -hmm. uh, what's a safe number, mm -hmm. and so we're we're trying to make those decisions, and hopefully we'll have uh, that figured out, and we'll get that out to the public as soon as we can. Uh, obviously, we want to you know, err on the side of caution. Um, we want to make sure that um, we're providing a safe environment. Um, you know, obviously we pride ourselves on our on our crowds mm -hmm. at our at our basketball and volleyball games. Yeah. And uh, you know, we we typically have very good community support for those and you know we obviously don't want to lose that, but at the same time we want to be safe. 
Yeah. And we want to make sure that um, everybody has a good experience. So, um, you know, we will, uh, we obviously will have uh, restrictions mm -hmm. and we already have protocols set up of, you know, incoming teams. We, we have run some scrimmages this mm -hmm. fall and we've, uh, we did that kind of twofold one to keep the kids uh, busy and <laughs> active and, and engaged in uh, you know why why are you yeah. here and and giving them some extracurricular activities I said back in uh, this summer you know this fall with no sports and, mm -hmm. and no activities uh, we actually need more student activities to than take ever up before, some of the dead time yeah. you know <laughs> so that the kids uh, you know, they don't get bored and go, eh, I'm going home. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm giving up on this college thing. I get homesick, yeah. whatever. And so we wanted to uh, try to keep, keep them involved, keep the okay. kids active, uh, but in a safe environment as, as much as possible. And I think this spring it's going to be uh, activity overload. Yes. Because we're going to have, uh, we're going to have pretty much uh, throughout the week and weekend, yeah. there's every weekend, as, there's something. As the sports information guy, I know I'm going to be pretty much running around with my hair on fire trying to get to everything. Absolutely. You know, and, and going into it, I thought we would have, when they first made the announcement we were moving to spring with the sports, uh -huh. I really thought we were going to have uh, busing issues. That oh, was yeah. uh, probably our biggest concern yeah. was... Uh, how are we going to get the teams where we need to get the teams and do we have enough buses? Do we have yeah. enough bus drivers? You yeah. know, and that's uh, one of the concerns I think people weren't thinking about. You know, it's not just, just the, the buses, it's the bus drivers. And uh, by them making the decision, the conference made the decision to move uh, spring football to Sunday afternoon. That loosened up some of that, yeah. Then that freed up uh, buses or, or conflicts that we would have on the weekends yeah. with baseball and softball and and uh, tournaments, soccer, you yeah. know, all of those that would need the, the uh, vehicles on the weekends. And that, I think, will relieve some of the stress on our fleet it doesn't relieve the stress on <laughs> bus drivers, <laughs> drivers because yeah. we, you know we still need to, we still need those. But yeah. uh, I do think that that has has helped us significantly there. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be down one of those things where somebody says there's nothing to do in Coffeeville. Well, let me tell you, yeah. <laughs> there's gonna, this spring there's going to be plenty yes, to do in Coffeeville. There's plenty of stuff um, to go to. You know, knock on wood, provided you know we're we're yeah. doing well with our COVID numbers, and and uh, you know there's always that possibility that um, you know if the numbers continue to rise, you know there's that possibility Gee, that you know spring sports uh, may be gone. Going back to that change and, thing. Uh, it's uh, we just have to be flexible and we have to make sure we're following our protocols yeah. and we're trying to keep our kids as safe as possible and our employees and yeah. um, that's that's kind of foremost in in my yeah. um, worry is that you know can we provide a safe learning yeah. environment for our kids and so that's what we're uh, striving to do so we'll see and I would point out, you know, some of the maybe the in-town folk or someone around, if you're if you're maybe not wanting to come to those events because of COVID, I you know I would point out obviously our our uh, media department with the streaming, we're going to try and stream as many of those sporting events as we can. So right uh, for those who can't make it or or just we don't have enough seats for everybody who want to come, maybe the streaming would be an option for them as well. Right, and I think you're going to see a lot of people, and we've already seen that. Uh, you know, in not just here locally, mm -hmm. but but nationwide, a lot of people are going to um, watching s stuff online, yeah. and uh, you know, utilizing their um, you know the TV and the uh -huh. cable and all those those avenues to to see their favorite sports. Yeah. And so and I and, you know I think that's um, where live streaming comes in. This is kind of one of those changes in the face of education. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot more resources online yes, for people. I think so. You're seeing it uh, in K through 12 education. Mm -hmm. You're you're seeing it in um, you know the colleges across the country, and I think it's just something that uh, it's going to be our new norm mm -hmm. that uh, we're. You know, we weren't used to. It's just like learning to run Zoom. Yeah. You know, yeah. we weren't used to Zoom, and all of a sudden, you know, we're all Zoom experts. Nobody <laughs> likes change until you're forced to have to do it, and then it, you know, then it kind of happens. Right. So, well, thanks, Dr. Thornburg. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thanks for the invite. Come back next time on Raven Sports Drive. <laughs>